This tutorial is sponsored by 3D.sk, human photo references for 3D artists and game developers. Check them out by using the link in the video description below. Hey there beautiful people! Uh, the objective of this tutorial is to create a walk cycle, like the one, if I just press play, there we go, like the one that you can see on screen here. So there he goes, we've got a walk cycle, there's a couple of steps that are being looped constantly. So our objectives for this tutorial are to learn about all the different poses that make up a walk cycle, as well as learning about the timing that's needed to make a, a convincing walk cycle as well. As for the technical side of things, we'll also be learning about auto key, which is a great time saving thing that you can do in Maya. And we'll also be learning how to copy and paste poses from one keyframe to another, again, because that'll help us save a lot of time when things are being repeated. As always, I'm uploading this tutorial in two versions. So there's the long version, which you're currently watching, where all the different steps are cut together into one long video. The other version is the shorter version. If you prefer that, that is each video is its own separate video that will be put together in a playlist and that breaks it down a little bit more. If you want that one, check the description below and you'll be able to switch over to that version. As well as the tutorial videos, there's also a written guide, which is already available to my patrons. If you would also like it, then you need to become a patron too. So follow the link in the video description and you'll be able to see my Patreon campaign and join up if you want to. Okay, that's the introduction out of the way. So in the next step, we will look at gathering some reference material before we get underway. So I'll see you in the next step. Hi there, welcome to step one of the walk cycle tutorial. So the first thing that we need to do in this step is get hold of the rig that we're using. So the rig that I've just shown you in the example is this happy guy and he is called Ultimate Walker and I will show you where he lives on the internet. So if we go to this website here, so this is cgmeetup.net uh, and I'll put the exact link in the video description uh, but you can see on this page which uh, was written by a Jason so I'm going to assume that Jason is the, the guy that created these rigs and they're ace. You can see he's got loads of different character rigs here that are really good for learning animation. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll find Ultimate Walker and it tells you what its features are and the all important thing is this download button here. So make sure you download it, which I have already done. So if you have a look here, I have downloaded Walker. So we'll just open that up. Okay, so this is what it looks like once you get him open with no animation on him or anything. So here he is, handsome chap. So he's quite a simplified rig. He hasn't got arms or a head, he doesn't need them because he's just, we're just learning the kind of mechanics of getting the legs animated in this video. So that's, that's kind of all we need. Okay, so in addition to the rig that we've got, we also need some reference stuff. So if we go back out to the internet, hi internet, and I'm going to be looking for some video reference first of all, and I'm going to be using 3D.sk, who have kindly agreed to sponsor this tutorial. So thank you very much for that. And it's just as well, really, because I'm using their, their video reference. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is find um, a walk cycle, uh, a video walk cycle that I like the look of. So to do that, I'm going to go in here. Now, the first thing I'm going to change is uh, clothes type, because you see there's a nude thing here. And if I was to leave that um, as anything, there would be so, so much nudity. So we'll just go for casual clothes, I think, in this instance. We're going to have a look in the video section and I want a um, walking video. And I'm also going to change the search for to videos here. And then when I click on search, here we go. And I actually want to use this first one. So she's just going to walk across, I think. And there's also one where she walks forward as well. So we'll just go for this first one here. Make sure it opens up all right. And this is what I want it to be. Yeah. So that's just kind of showing how she walks like that. So I'd highly recommend doing that because what I've done uh, is I've broken this down a little bit. So if we have a look here, I've actually taken the video and I've broken it down into the poses. Uh, and you can see I've also assigned some frame numbers to them, which I'll talk about how I did that shortly. But you can see we've got each of the poses. So this one here is the first contact pose. Uh, um, the, the good thing about kind of getting video reference when you break it down is you can see all the different things that change. So I think if it's the first time you've done a walk cycle, you'd maybe fall into the trap of thinking it's just the legs that you need to move, which is not the case. 
you actually need to be moving um, more than that. And you see in this example here, if we look at where the hip is over here, um, in fact, let's just, um, yeah, you can see it's more this, this bit here and this bit, you can see that this is kind of facing forward. Whereas over here, that bit of the hip has gone. So uh, the actual hips are rotating as well, which is something that you really need to look at. As well as that, you can kind of get a, a feel for what the shape of the kind of legs is in uh, each frame. So you can see that one like that is not quite, uh, the, the feet are up in the air. So that's worth looking at. And on this one here, we can kind of get up from the hips and we can see there's a bend, uh, but the toes are lifting. So we're going to get that kind of that shape there where there's still something in contact with the floor. So breaking these down and having a look kind of what's happening on, on each frame is a really good way to do things. Uh, and I would highly recommend going to somewhere like 3D.SK for their reference video or filming yourself doing the movements that you're looking at because your animation will be a lot stronger because you've taken the time to do that. This is what it looks like from the side. If we have a look at the front as well, we can also see some important stuff. So we saw that the hips are kind of rotating backwards and forwards, but they also rotate up and down. So if we look here, so she's got her right leg down uh, and this leg is contacting, but you can see the hips are kind of going down in that direction. And then when she swapped legs, so once this one here is the one that's forward, you can see that the hips, the rotation of them has changed. So when we're animating this, we also need to be aware of this and put some rotation into the hips. And here, although it's not perfectly straight, it kind of should be. So you can see that um, the rotation of the hips is happening all the way through. And that's something that we need to get into the animation as well. That is what this video reference can be really critical for, for really getting that understanding of what's happening. So in addition to that, um, you can see here, I've got these frame numbers and um, these are very specific frame numbers. We're going to be animating this on 12s, which is animation speed for the kind of speed that we're going to be doing. So that's two steps per second. So we're going to have left foot forward, right foot forward, and that's going to happen in one second. And where I got these frame timings from is from a book, would you believe? So I want to show you this book because it's ace. This one here, there you go. Can you see it? There it is. This is called the Animator's Survival Kit. And if there was a Bible for animation, it would be this. It is so good. Um, and I will try and show you. What I'll do is I think I'll overlay some video over this section so you can see what I'm looking at. Um, but you've got the, uh, the different poses here have been laid out. But more importantly, on the other page, um, the frame timings are there. So you can see that the first contact has been put on frame one and the last contact is put on frame 13 and that's for one step. So we know that we are going to double that so that we can um, have two steps. It shows you where the passing pose should be and where the up and down poses should be. And this book is phenomenal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link to this book because if you want to be an animator, you should own this book. It should be with you at all times uh, to give you an idea of kind of the depth that it goes into. There's about 100 pages covering walk cycles. It then moves on to runs and stuff like that. So it's ridiculously good for the fundamentals. So I'll put a link below to somewhere that you can buy the book, probably Amazon. And if I can figure it out, it, uh, it might be a, a referral link. So I might get a kickback if I can work out how to set that up. But I should probably state that now just in case I do get that set up. Yeah, check this book out. This is where I'm getting the timings from for this walk cycle. So I'm using um, a lot of a lot of reference material to get this this working. So I've got video reference. I'm also looking at the animation guide in this book. I'm getting frame timings, uh, and it's all going to come together in the next step when we start putting the contact poses in. With that said, the next thing that we need to look at. Let's go back into Maya. We just want to get Maya set up for creating this animation. So the first thing I'm going to do is kind of change my workspace. So up in the top corner, we're set to Maya Classic, which is great for most things. But I want a little bit more on screen. And I'm just going to kind of change the layout. So I'm going to drop this down and go to animation, which is the one at the bottom. And you'll see this changes a few things. Now we've got um, this is a, a graph editor down the bottom, which is really good. And we'll use the graph editor later on. 
Uh, and we've also got this here, but I don't want this. So I'm going to tap spacebar and it should put me into the four view, which it does. That's exactly what I want. And then I'm going to pull this down because I only want two views. So I've got my perspective view over here and this is the top view, which is not actually what I want. So I'm just going to change this panel to orthographic side and this is the view I want. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit on this because I'll do most of the animation in the orthographic views. So this is what I want to see here is just kind of for preview purposes. But this this one here is the important view. OK, so we've got that set up. The next thing that I want to do is go into the, the settings. So let's click on this little chap down here. I love this guy. He looks like he's being attacked by a cog. Like, oh, he's chasing me. No. Uh, so here he is. Uh, right. So I'm just going to change that to start at one. Like that. And um, we also want to make sure that the playback speed is on real time 24 frames per second. Like that. So that's what I'm going for. So we'll leave that one there. I also want to change something else. I'm going to go to the animation settings here. And we're looking at the default in and out tangent. And what tangents are, are the shape of your animation curves. And we'll cover this a little bit later. So at the moment, they're set to auto. I don't like leaving it auto because then I feel like I'm not in control. So I'm going to change this to being spline. Which I'm quite comfortable with. I may well change them away from being spline when I'm making the tweaks later. But I'm going to have them at spline now because I'm comfortable with it. So we'll click on save. OK, so that's basically Maya set up for this animation. Uh, there's one more thing we need to do. So I'm starting at frame one, but I need to end at frame 25. So I'm just going to type 25 in this box and press enter. Yay. So we're going from one to 25, which will allow me to put in the timings um, that I just kind of showed you. OK, so before we can actually get any animation done, we're going to turn on one last thing. This is called uh, auto key and it's amazing. So it lives here. Uh, this little icon just here, there you go, auto keyframe toggle. We click on that, you see it stays on. And what this does, on frame one in the next step, we're going to set keys on everything. So all the controllers. Um, and then whenever we move on to another frame and change anything, what will happen is it will automatically drop a keyframe on there for us, which is a ridiculously good time saver. It can also keep your, your graphs a little bit neater as well. So we need to have that on. Right, we're now ready to move on to the next step and start doing some animation. So the next step, we're going to set up the first contact pose, which will be on frame one. Um, so make sure that you've got all your settings like I've got. Um, check out the animated survival kit and also have a look at 3D.sk for some reference stuff. And I will see you in the next step where we'll get the first pose put together. OK, here we go. It's time to get some animation done. The first thing we'll do is set up the first contact pose. And the reason it's called a contact pose is because it's from when the foot that was at the back that's just been raised contacts with the floor again. So if we have a look in uh, my little series of images that we used earlier, it's when this foot here at the back has been, so you can see it's been raised, it's passed, and then here it's contacting with the ground again. So that is a contact pose. So we're going to create the first of these. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do some work on the hip controller. We're also going to make sure that the playhead is on frame one. Right. So what I'll do, first of all, is just move this down a bit and I'll also move it forward. The reason I'm moving it down is because we want to give some sort of freedom so the legs can move around. And the reason I'm moving it forward is because I want to create the illusion, the feeling of momentum. So I want it to look like the character's leaning forward. To further the kind of feeling of him leaning forward, I'm also going to rotate him a little bit as well, just so that he's kind of leaning into this walk. Right, I also want to do a little bit more work on these hips. But before I do that, I kind of need to know um, which leg is going forward and which leg is going back. So I'm going to select the right leg first. And I'm just going to move it forward a little bit and then I'll select the left leg and I'll move that backwards. And I'm moving the right leg forward just because that's the one I prefer to move. I, I don't know why, it's just I think it's because it's the one nearest to me. Okay, so now I know which is going forward and which is going back. I can rotate the hips a little bit further. So I'll select my hips controller again. And what I'm going to do now is rotate so that the hip 
of the foot that's going forward is also facing forward a little bit so leaning into it so i'm just going to do that a little bit just leaning in bringing that hip forward and what i'll also do is i want it to look like weights being transferred as well so i'm going to just drop that hip a little bit to make it look like the the weight is kind of going through that leg so i'm just going to bring that down a touch as well so i'm, I'm fairly happy with the hips there so what i want to do now is work on getting the legs set up on this pose so I'm going to concentrate on the foot leg first and what I'll do first of all is just move as far forward as I can without overextending the knee which I think is about there but what I want is kind of let's just go back to my image I want to raise it up off the ground a bit like I've got going on there so to do that I'm going to introduce you to the extra controls on this rig so if you look in the channel box along with being able to access your translate and rotate values as you can with kind of any object in Maya there are also these extra character animation controls and the one that we want in this case is the foot roll controller so i'm making sure i've got the foot selected that i want to work on i'm going to left click on this foot roll control here and then using my middle mouse button i'm just going to click and drag either left or right until i get kind of what i want so you can see now that that's raising the foot which is what i want so i'm going to raise it to about that sort of angle i think and what that also does it means i can move the foot a little bit further forward as well so it's giving me a little bit more to work with so i'm going to move it to there i think i've actually kind of overextended that a little bit on the foot roll so i'm just going to bring that in a little bit and just bring that back yeah i'm happy with that so what i'm also going to do is work on the back foot so i select that one and similar to what i just did on the um the front foot i'm going to take it as far back as i can without overextending it so it's about there but what i want to do now is create kind of a, a tiptoe sort of effect so i don't know if i drew that on my image um, but what i'm looking for we'll draw this on now is this leg that's coming down is kind of contacting the floor but then you've got a little bit of a change in the the foot there so that is what i'm going to try and create with this foot so to do that i'm going to select both the foot roll and holding control on my keyboard i'm going to select the foot break as well and then with my middle mouse button i'm just going to drag until i get um, a foot position that i like and again you can see that's given me a little bit of freedom to be able to move that foot further back which i'm going to take and give me something like that um, okay so that is the beginnings of the walk cycle so this is the the first contact pose and i'm pretty happy with that so i think what i'll do now is i'll key this pose so in order to do that what i need to do is drag a box so i'm going to click and drag uh, to get a marquee selection of all the controllers you can see that they're all highlighted here and then on frame one i'm going to press s on my keyboard and that keys everything so you can see straight away we've got some red lines here we've got a red line down here and if i select any of the controllers you can see that there you go everything's keyed same on this one and same on the hips everything's now keyed brilliant but what we also need to keep in mind is this is a walk cycle and for a cycle to work the first frame and the last frame need to be identical being similar is no good they have to be 100 percent identical so to ensure that we, that's what we get we're going to make sure we've got all the controllers selected and we're going to go to frame 25 and then we're going to press s again and that just ensures that those two frames are going to be exactly the same thing right so that wraps up the first contact pose uh, what we're going to do in the next step is we're going to set up the second contact pose where we reverse the leg positions and reverse the rotation on the hips right so far so good so what we're going to do now is create the second contact pose where the leg position will be reversed uh, and for that we need to be on frame 13 because that's in between 1 and 25 uh, and as i said earlier we're going to be uh, animating this on 12s so um you know we started on frame 1 12 frames later is frame 13 so that's where we need to be and to get this started what we're going to do is make sure we've got all the controllers selected and we're just going to set a key on 13 so now we've got three keyframes that are all identical but now we've got that um, done uh, what we're going to do 
is make sure that uh, we invert some of these things. So I'm going to select my hips controller and I'm going to invert some of the rotate values. But what I'm not going to rotate is the one for the, the leaning forward. So I can see that that's controlled by this red line, uh, which this here tells me is my X um, axis. So if I just do that, you can see rotate X is moving. So I'm going to leave that alone because I want it to stay rotating forward all the time. So what I want to do is reverse rotate Y and rotate Z. So to reverse that, so rotate Y for instance is set to 11.354. So I'm just going to put a minus before that and that will give me the opposite value. It will rotate it that much in the opposite direction. The same for rotate Z, so that's set to minus 5.559. So I'm going to remove the minus. And what that has done for me on frame 13 is now given the opposite effect on the hip controller. The next thing to do is to get the uh, the legs swapped over because you can see now that we've made the changes to the hips, uh, the legs have gone a, a bit crazy. So they're going to need some help. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to frame one and I'm going to start with the right leg first. So this one here. So I'm going to get that and I'm going to copy the values onto the other leg on frame 13. So I'm going to right click on my, um, my timeline on frame one and I'm going to copy. And then what I'm going to do is go to frame 13 and on the other leg, which is right here, I'm going to right click, paste and paste. And you can see they are now both in the same position. So with that leg still selected, so now it's the front leg, I'm going to go back to frame one and I'm going to copy the values from here. And then I'm going to just select the left leg again go back to frame 13 and I'm going to paste those values over and there you go so that has now created um, another contact pose but everything is now kind of switched so if we play that you can see it looks a bit wrong at this stage but we've got the hips rotating we've got the kind of hips moving backwards and forwards as well so that's working well and the legs are going backwards and forwards so what we're going to do in the next step is we'll set up our first passing pose. You still with me? Good. Right. So now what we'll do is the first passing pose. So if we go back to my little um, plan that I went for here, we can see that the passing pose is going to happen in between um, 1 and 13, which puts it at frame 7. So let's go to frame 7, which is right here and we need to do some work on this so what we'll do first of all is work out what we're going to do with each foot so we're going to work on the back foot first the one that is actually passing so i'm going to make sure that i select that and then when i go to frame seven i still know which is which so the first thing i'm going to do is remove the foot brake which sounds like a really good way for your car to roll down a hill doesn't it <laughs> wordplay okay so I remove the foot brake set that to zero I'm also going to change the foot roll. So I'm just going to click on that middle mouse button. And what I want to do is I'm just going to turn this around so that it's kind of pointing straight down. Now this will look very much like I'm ripping the leg off, but I'm going to repair that by changing uh, the position as well. So something like that, I think for now. So. That'll do for that foot, just for the time being. So it's just raised a little bit off the ground. Um, and then I'm gonna select the standing foot. And from this one, I'm gonna remove both the foot roll and the foot brake. There we go. And that kind of puts that nicely standing on the ground. So the last thing for me to do now is I'm just going to select the hips and move that up so that he gets a little higher like that right so that pose I'm actually pretty happy with so you can see because we've got auto key turned on I've got a uh, keyframes already on seven because of the changes I made yay so that's saved a bit of time so that set up the first passing pose in the next step we'll be setting up the second passing pose where we need to reverse everything right so we've now got three solid poses we're going to add the fourth which is going to be the reverse passing pose. 
So this is going to happen between 13 and 25. And my basic understanding of maths tells me that that should be frame 19. Right here. Now we don't actually want to do much thinking here. All we're going to do is copy and paste the values from frame 7 onto 19, but onto the opposite foot. So we'll do that first of all. So what I'll do is I'm going to select the left foot, I think I'll start with, and I'm going to copy the values from frame 7. Then I'm going to move to frame 19. I'm going to select the right foot, which is my red controller. And I'm going to right click on 19, paste and paste. And you can see that has now taken the pose from frame 7. Okay, so with the right foot still selected, I'm going to go to frame 7. I'm going to copy the values from there. And then what I'll do is change to the left foot. I'm going to go to frame 19, right click and paste those values in there. And hopefully that will work, but it hasn't. And I will show you why. So I'm just going to undo that step. And I'm going to go back to frame um, 7. So you can see I'm actually wanting to copy um, everything from here. But not everything has got keys set on it. If we look at the other foot, this has got translate values keyed. As well as the foot roll. Um, but this one does not. So the way that we're going to make sure that it copies everything properly is we're just going to set a key just on this foot before we copy it. So I'll press S on my keyboard. You see now everything goes red. Now I'm going to copy that. And when I move to frame 19 and switch feet, if Jeebus loves me, um, I will be able to paste that over, which it has. So now when I click between 7 and 19, they look identical over here anyway, other than the fact that they've, they've swapped the legs. There's one one more thing that we need to change though. If you look, when I'm clicking between them, whilst the feet position is kind of staying consistent, the height is changing. Now we can't just copy and paste the keyframe for the hips because we've got other rotation things going on. So what we're gonna do is just go to frame seven and I'm gonna look at my translate Y value, which is set to 0 0.076. And I'm just gonna put that on here as well so minus 0 0.076 which is what it should be and that now has keyed for me because I've got auto key turned on and when I'm flicking between them that works a blooming treat okay so let's play that and see what we're we're doing and you can see now that we've got those passing poses in it's starting to look a lot more like a walk cycle so that is the two passing poses done in the next step we're going to do the first down pose. Okay, we're doing very well so far. So we're going to continue with this magnificent progress we're making by getting this down pose sorted. So let's go back to my uh, reference video that I've cut now. And this one here is the down pose. This is what we're going for. And we see the timer here is frame four. So let's, uh, let's get this one sorted. So on frame four, what we're going to do is, um, yeah, definitely some work needed on frame four. This this does not look good. Right, so we're going to move to frame four. And the first thing I'm going to do is just move the hips down slightly. Okay, the reason it's called the down pose is because things move down a little bit. Okay, then I'm going to select the front foot, which is the right foot. This is the one that's coming backwards. And I'm going to remove from this the foot roll. So I'm going to set that to zero. You can see that plants it firmly on the ground, which is what we want. We want now that that foot is is connected with the ground properly. Okay, then we're going to select the back foot, and from this one, we're going to take off the foot break. Uh, and that should kind of straighten the foot out um, because there's no tiptoe. You know, there's no bending the toe happening now. The next thing we want to do is place that foot back on the ground because it shouldn't be raising yet. This is the uh, the down poses where you kind of build your momentum. So you're pushing off with that back foot. So to do that, we're just gonna set the translate Y value of this foot to zero. And you can see that puts it back in contact with the ground. Okay, the last thing I want to do is I want it to kind of look like this back foot is pushing off. So you can see here, kind of the main contact point of the foot is just where this uh, this part of the foot is here 
uh, and that's just before this line so on frame four I want to just push this back a little bit so that's kind of the same the same area and it'll just hopefully look like that's pushing off which is what we're going for so that there is our first down pose complete so what we'll be doing in the next step if you've noticed a pattern yet is we'll be putting in the reverse down pose what we'll do in this step then is we will now uh, mirror the down pose that we created in the last step onto the the opposite feet a little bit further on so you can see that we did our last down pose on frame four which to kind of work out that's three frames after our contact pose so the next time that we're three frames after a contact pose is at frame 16 so it's 16 where we'll put our next down pose so the first thing i want to do is just copy the information from one foot to the other uh, like we did with the previous steps so i'm going to start with yeah we'll go left foot first so i'm going to copy the values here and then i'm going to go to frame 16 select the right foot and i'm going to paste that on there and i'm just going to check to see if i like that um that looks right i think when i drop the hips i think that's going to match up properly so what we're also going to do is with the right foot selected we're going to go to frame four now and i'm going to copy that and then go to frame 16 again change feet and then i'm going to paste okay and then i'm just going to flick between four and 16 and they're not exactly right so what we're going to do is just mirror the the y value of the hips and hope that, that sorts it out so we'll go to frame four and we can see that's set to minus 0 0.185 so we'll go to 16 and change that to minus 0 0.185 that has definitely had an effect we'll see if it's the right effect nope that's definitely not what i wanted it to be so what we're going to do then is select both feet on frame four and we're going to key everything press s and now we're going to copy those values over again and it should work so we'll start again with the left foot so i'm going to copy that and then i'll switch to the right foot go to frame 16 and we'll paste that in that looks better i'm going to keep that foot selected go to frame 4 copy the values switch to the other foot back to 16 and then paste okay and that now looks a lot better so if I now flick between these two, again, they look identical, but I've swapped the value onto different feet. So that is now two down poses complete. So let's play that. And it's starting to come together. You can see now that it's got a little bit of a uh, bit of swagger, I think. He's got swag. Um, and a lot of the key poses are now working together. So now that our two down poses are complete, in the next step, we will create the first up pose okay so what we need to do now is get the first up pose created right so as you can see this walk cycles coming together so they're making a change every three frames so if we have a look here we've got one four seven and the next thing that we need to look at is creating a pose on frame 10 and you can see this is our up pose so that's what we're going to create so let's move to frame 10 okay the kind of distinguishing thing about an up pose is that everything is at the highest point in the walk cycle so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to start by moving the hips up and we're going to go as high as we can without breaking anything so then what we'll do is we'll work on the front foot a little bit so the first thing i'll do is remove the foot break because we don't need any of that so i'm going to set that to zero and then what i'll do is i'm just going to move it back a little bit just to create this sort of shape that I want and I'm going to change the foot roll just so that it's kind of facing that way and then just a little bit more 
positioning work needs to happen here. So I'm just gonna make sure that's raised up ever so slightly. Yeah, so that's the kind of shape that I want to go for um, on the front leg. On the back leg though, I'm just gonna increase the foot roll and the foot break a little bit because what that will do is it'll allow me to raise the hips up a little bit more without overextending anything like that. So I think that is what I'm gonna go with for my up pose. So with that pose done, what we're gonna do is just select both feet and we're just gonna press S to set keys and everything, just to rule out any of the problems that we've had in previous steps. Um, and then in the next step, we're gonna create the second up pose. Okay, so it's time to get the last pose done. So we are so close to finishing, it's so exciting. Right, so we're gonna do the second up pose, which kind of just means that we have to reverse everything around on frame 22. So the first thing I want to do for this one is I'm actually just gonna copy the values over from the hips first. So on frame 10, I can see that my translate Y is minus 0 0.033. So I'm gonna to go to frame 22, and I'm just gonna set that to be the same value. And that's a good start. Okay, now what I need to do is reverse what's happening on the legs. So, because I keyed uh, them already, it shouldn't give me any problems. So I'm gonna start with the left leg, and I'm gonna copy the values from frame 10. I'm then gonna to switch to the right leg, and then on frame 22, I'm gonna paste that over. Lovely. Right, and now with the right leg selected, I'm gonna to go to frame 10, copy the values there, select the left leg, go to 22 and paste them in. Boom. Now let's just flick between 10 and 22, and make sure that they look similar. Okay, so that's looking nice. So what I need to do now is test this. Okay, so this is the basis of our walk cycle. And it's already not bad, but in the next step, we're just going to polish this by using the graph editor. There are a couple of areas I can see. If you look closely, you can see that the feet are raising at certain points. So we'll look at repairing that in the next step. Right, now that the walk cycle is basically finished, what we need to do now is have a proper look at it and make sure that we iron out any issues. So if we have a look at our walk cycle as it stands, particularly what's happening with the feet. So as I scroll through, let's watch this front foot. And as it comes back, there it's okay, but it's there, it's raising up off the ground, which shouldn't really happen. There it's all kinds of wonky. Um, and then somewhere it's raising off the ground there. That is well up in the air. So there's definitely some issues that we need to address. So I'm gonna start with this foot. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to select everything in here. I'm going to press A. I'm going to select all my tangents, all my lines. And I'm going to set them all to spline because it appears that they didn't stay that way. I think that's going to give me a much smoother, um, a much smoother curve. Yeah, so that foot I'm actually kind of happy with. So there are a few places now where I need to go back in and make repairs. But I think for the whole, the whole thing, I'm gonna select every single thing, hang on. So let's select everything in here. Make sure I can see everything. Select all those curves. I'm just gonna change them all to spline. Yep, so that's a few changes that have been made there. Right, let's see what that gives us. Yeah, so already that's much better and I just need to make a few tweaks. So, Let's go back to this back foot, and I can see that this issue here, um, where the foot, in fact, no, this one, the foot wobbles, there we go, so I need to sort that one out. So I'm gonna select these two, I'm gonna set that to linear, and that'll give me a nice straight line. That'll keep that foot planted. Yep, and I'll have the same issue on this foot over here. So let's set that to linear. Okay, let's play that back and see what that looks like now.
from the front that looks kind of tidy let's just turn the curves off okay so through playing with the graph editor there are definitely some more improvements that could be made to this uh, but I think for now I'm happy enough with that so there we go right so that brings us to the end of this tutorial uh, I hope you've learned something obviously in this one we've only done um, a walk cycle on the legs uh, if you would like to see a full body walk cycle then make sure you like this video hit the subscribe button and leave a comment telling me that that's what you want to see if you want the full body uh, tutorial then say hey Shane where's the full body tutorial and uh, when I find time that'll be something that I'll add to my list of tutorials to make if you have any problems with this or if you need help um, then once a month I have video chats with my patreon supporters uh, so they bring me problems they ask me questions and I help them solve them um, send me files etc so if you'd like that kind of support then consider checking out the link below the video checking out my patreon campaign and maybe supporting me there uh, and that way you'll get access to me uh, much more one-to-one -one than simply through the YouTube comments uh, and I'll be able to help you out there as well as that you will get the uh, handout the the written version of this exercise uh, which I'll make available to all my patrons I want to say thanks to 3d.sk for sponsoring this video you really should go and check out uh, their reference video section as well as their reference image as well there's some really good stuff on there the 3d capture stuff that they're doing is ridiculously good and that's something I want to play with in the future maybe I'll rig one of those characters up for for a tutorial but you should definitely check out uh, their site because it's really good and one last thing if you're watching this video because you're getting into animation then you really need to make sure you understand the fundamentals so for god's sake buy this book it's such a good book um, so it's by richard williams it's called the animator survival kit i will have a link in the video description uh, check it out it'll be the best book you've ever bought i promise okay so that's me finished thanks for watching this one and I will see you in the next one.